It either you wonder why people of the Cape are such good stories. Look at Table Mountain with such a mountain which has so many myths and legends and tales which can be shared. You cannot find a poor storyteller anywhere in Cape Town. My name is Yassi, born and bred in Cape Town, and we are at Grotteskeer Old Abandoned Zoo. What makes Cape Town very special? It comes from the first people as well. They used to call this mountain behind me, Urikwahu, the mountain from the sea. And anyone visiting Cape Town, whether you come by land, sea or air, the first thing you'll notice is Table Mountain, the mountain which rises out of the sea. The zoo started in the late 1800s, formed and actually conceived by the governor of the Cape, Cecil John Rhodes, quite a powerful industrial magnet, and he bought up most of Table Mountain and the slopes of Table Mountain. At some point, he received a gift, and that was two lions and a leopard. And that was the beginning of the Grotteskeer Zoo. After his death, Cecil John Rhodes requested of the city bequeath the entire slopes of Table Mountain and what is today known as Table Mountain National Park to the city of Cape Town and its people. In the case of what we know as the old abandoned zoo, and above it, Rhodes Memorial. His one request was the condition, it always remains free, the entry to these, these structures. When we look at the zoo and we walk through this place, we see abandonment. The way I remember it is when we were young, and I'm talking about the late 70s, I would say mid to late 70s, my mom would bring us over here. We'd come and spend an afternoon at the zoo. Sometimes I remember seeing the lions over here. I remember watching him come out of his cage and sitting on the grass in front. And it was very normal to actually see a lion. Never mind, Cape Town no longer has any lions. This lion always used to look sad as well, I must say. He looked very sad. I'm actually trying to think if it was a he or she. <laughs> I can't I remember so little, but yeah. There was sadness, there was more than one. I remember that as well. But that is how I remember the zoo. Not as an abandoned place but sometimes a bit of a place of sadness. Let me tell you the story about the ghost of Verlatenbosch. In those early days, two, three hundred years ago, there was a governor of the Cape who incurred the, the vengeful nature of one of the citizens, which resulted in his son being infected with a disease known as leprosy. What happened? The citizen devised a plan and lured the governor, the governor's son, to listen to the flute playing of an old leper. As a boy listened to this melodious tunes, the excitement also caused him to want to try it, which is the nature of any child. Let me also try and see if I can play these tunes. And that was a sadness that occurred. The boy was infected with incurable leprosy. And as sad as it was, 
he was forced to live in isolation in a lonely hut on the slopes of Table Mountain. And that area became known as Verlatenbosch, the abandoned. Some of our locals will say, when the evening falls, and if you have to listen carefully on the breeze that whispers through the trees on the slopes of Table Mountain, you can still hear the governor's son flute playing. As we sit here in the abandoned zoo and thinking about the ghost of Verlatenbosch, I get to see a feeling of abandonment as well. I remember a time when the zoo was a lively place and filled with energy. And now when I look around, all that remains is a memory. And like this has a visual memory for me. So also the flute of this boy, when you hear it on the breeze, it is also a audio memory of a time gone by and a sad time as well. Like the boy was, was caged up. These animals were also caged up. So when I hear the boys' tunes play on the wind, it's a sense of abandonment, a sense of caging up, but also a sense of freedom. Freedom of the wind, freedom to be on the slopes of the mountain and wander freely, no longer caged. Sometimes there's a beauty in abandonment. The mountain has always been a dominating feature in our lives in the sense that you fall in love with Cape Town but your love starts with Table Mountain. It is the energy which attracts you. We have much beauty in Cape Town but the start of all beauty is Table Mountain and it energizes our lives, makes us positive, makes us happy, and still sustains our hope and our dreams of a better world. <laughs>